Hi everybody, it's Richard again from Electric Classic Cars here and thanks everybody for watching our previous videos, our tech talks and all the great comments below that we've had to kind of refine our content, specifically the Q&A session that we've got coming up. So we're going to do a Q&A session that's kind of going to answer lots of questions that you guys have there about electric classic cars and just electric cars in general. So if you've got any questions out there that you just don't have a good answer for, put them in the comments below and we'll add them to our Q&A session that we got coming up in a few weeks time. But in our last video, I asked you what's under this cover? Because, you know, my Beetle, I've got a Tesla performance motor in the back. It does not to 60 in about 2.6 seconds, but it's a road car. It's a daily driven sort of like road car. And there's restrictions that come when you're converting a road car that you can't do with you know, a blank sheet of paper, if you like. And you kind of get used to 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. And, you know, I wanted something that I could just build without restrictions. And, you know, that's what we have underneath here. So I asked you in the last video, what do you think is underneath this cover? There's some interesting answers to that. I mean, you know, I saw a couple of Citroen 2CVs and uh, London taxis. Um, there was some uh, really interesting ones. A, P a PT Cruiser, that was another one. <laughs> okay. Uh, a Lotus 7, definitely not a Lotus 7 because it's, it's too high for that. Um, beach buggy, mm, closer than you think actually with beach buggy. So there's some interesting guesses, but I can tell you now, nobody got it right. So it's time to reveal our 2022 little project that we got going on here. So Tim, you're gonna to have to give me a hand here getting this cover off and uh, see if everybody becomes any wiser. So here we go, drum roll. There we are. There we go, grab that. So there we go. Are you any the wiser? Probably not. So what we have here is a fun cup chassis. Now, for those that don't know, a fun cup is a um, single seater um, race championship, which has a silhouette of a VW Beetle, but it's an all out race car. And having this gives me the opportunity to build something which essentially isn't restricted by the fact it's a road car. So we are gonna go full fat crazy on this build and build it with the fastest possible technology on the market. We put four wheels on each corner now and a seat in just to give it some visual context because it's really difficult to try to visualize what this car is gonna look like. But on the flip side, it's great that you're here right at the start of this project. So, what is this project? Well, first of all, this is my project. With a customer's project, you always start with a brief of, you know, what the range is going to be, what the power they want, etc., etc. And it's all within the constraints of what car they brought to us. But here, we're going for ultimate performance without the constraints of the existing vehicle. And that means I can go massive power, ultimate handling that we can get, and obviously, how are we going to get that power to, down to the ground? Um, the other thing is, I want it to be lightweight as well. So that's kind of the brief, really, to build the ultimate performant electric track car. Right, let's get out. Oh, this reminds me of my rallying days, getting out of a roll cage. Right, first thing to discuss, as uh, Colin Chapman used to say, is add lightness. I mean, if you're going to build something that is ultimate performance, you've got to have something that is lightweight as well. And as you can see, this is a tubular chassis. It's nice and strong. It's got like triangulations and like, you know, crossbars, etc. So this is a very strong, rigid chassis, but it's also quite light compared to a normal car. What's going to go over this is a fiberglass skin, if you like, that's then going to make it look like a VW Beetle. So that's going to be our starting point, a very lightweight, rigid, race oriented chassis. The next thing we want to do to that then is add power. But to that, I need to go and grab something, which is a motor, and we can talk about what we're going to actually be putting in this, which is rather special. So let me go and grab that for you now. Right then, let's talk about power. 
So I want the ultimate electric power uh, train in this car and there's only one route to go in my mind and that is Tesla Plaid. So we're going to go four wheel drive because that's the only way we're going to get the power down to the ground. And a Tesla Plaid, the car is what? A thousand horsepower, zero to sixty in two seconds, two hundred mile per hour top speed. And putting that into this car, which is going to weigh less, is going to be interesting. <laughs> in short, so one of the first challenges we've got is we're going to make a two wheel drive race car four wheel drive. So this never was designed to have a drivetrain in the front. Um, so we've got to fit this in there. Now, an initial look-see, um, it looks like it's going to be tight, but I think it should go. So that's going to be the first thing to try to get in, is the immovable objects, as we always like to call them, which are the motors. Because once the motors are in, then you can work everything else around it. So that has to go in there. And then in the rear, we are going to be sticking the motor around about here. And that's going to be interesting as well, because obviously we don't want it further back than this. Everything's got to be within the crash protection of the vehicle. So I don't want any batteries or anything hanging over here, because that's not exactly going to be a good idea if, it, um, if the worst happens. So everything's got to be within here. We're going to have the motor there. And the motor at the back of a Tesla plant is actually two motors. So it's a very special carbon wrap motor. So we're going to have one motor uh, at the rear, one at the front, four wheel drive. So that's the drivetrain, the power, if you like. How are we going to feed that power? So let's talk about batteries. Right, so with a motor in place there, We've got to feed the beast here, so we've got to have a battery pack that can cope with the amount of amps that the motor is asking for, and that means high C rating. Now, in the last tech talk we did on batteries, C rating, if you remember, is all about how many amps it can give in a short space of time. So we're not looking for you know a range of 150, 200 miles uh, with a battery pack here. What we're looking for is maximum C rating and the ability to treat them like ballast, if you like, and have the battery packs in locations which uh, improve the handling of the car by having low center of gravity and awesome weight distribution. And I'm going to stick my neck out here and say we're going to have multiple packs throughout the car. So I can already see there should be a space around about here. So that's going to be one battery pack. Um, and the f But we've got to balance out the weight of a battery pack there and the motor somewhere up front, um, which is going to be quite difficult, I think, because we're going to have motor all in here can't put anything there because essentially you can have pedal set legs etc and I don't want to go any further forward than this point here so that's going to be a bit of a challenge not quite sure what we're going to do here we're not going to put batteries kind of underneath and lift the seat up or if we're going to have side pods here with batteries uh, obviously we don't want to come outside of the cage either so again I'm not quite sure what we're going to do on batteries yet but the first thing we're going to do is get what we call the immovable objects in. Let's get the motors in because the motors have to sit where the motors sit. So we're going to get those in first and then we're going to revisit the batteries to figure out where we can put them, what type we can use and how many kilowatt hours we can get in. So there we go. That is the project itself. I can't wait to get my teeth into it fully. It's going to be kind of a, an evenings and weekend project for us around all the customer builds that we have to deal with in the, in the workshop. But I'm interested to hear your comments. What do you think? Do you think we're crazy? Do you think we should have started with a different vehicle? You know, any pointers? You know, any tips, all you race uh, car builders out there? What, you know, what should we actually do to, you know, get the handling right? What struts to use? What sort of like brake systems to use, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Because, you know, everything helps. And it's great you guys are going to be uh, along uh, the journey with us. And, it, and I promise we'll be showing warts and all on this as well. So if we make a mistake, we'll film it and we'll learn from that mistake. And it'll be a great journey for you guys as well, because essentially we're going to kind of like think along with you guys as to, you know, where we're going to put stuff and why we're going to use that, etc. So it's going to be a great journey. Really look, looking forward to it. Hopefully it's not going to be a Project Brinky saga, which is like seven, eight years now and fantastic project, by the way. 
I want to get this done this year, get it on a track this year, so that next year we can really start attacking you know, various events. And that's also a good question for you guys. What events should we do? Where should we bring this? I don't mind going international, taking it uh, overseas. What should we do with this once we built it? Because um, you know, there's only so many tracks in the UK which you can do track days on, so yeah, I'll be interested to hear what you think we should do. So there we go. Hope you're uh, excited as I am. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.